What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a little bit of a shorter episode for this week. So I didn't get a chance to watch as much as I wanted, um, even though I did get to start watching um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, I did fall asleep a couple of times through the movie. Um, not to say that it was boring, most of it was actually super interesting, but I've um, been drained from work. so. I just never got through it. I would fall asleep for like 15 minutes at a time and be lost. So I figured this weekend would be a good time to watch the movie in full, get a good nice rest, drink some extra coffee or something, and watch the movie from beginning to end uninterrupted. But that being said, that doesn't mean that there isn't other content to review. So to start it off, um, the, I did have a chance to watch this week's episode of episode of Ahsoka, so season one, episode three, Time to Fly. Um, overall, this kind of felt like a stepping stone episode. We saw, you know, Sabine Gay practicing her um, fighting technique a little bit to uh, become less rusty. We had a space chase scene um, and a little bit more of the understanding between Ahsoka and Sabine to work together as a team, that they work better together and all of that stuff. So. Overall, that, that episode was fine, nothing good or bad. The past episodes, a couple of episodes were better, but it does look like we're gonna spend the rest of the season now going forward as far as the search for Thrawn, um, the star map, and the highway, the whale space highway um, transportation lane thingy to find Thrawn. So um, overall, that's kind of why this episode was fine as a stepping stone, but Nothing really to phone home about, so I don't really have too much to say there. Um, otherwise, I have been continuing to watch Stargate SG-1, so I finished Season 4, I'm in, and I'm now in the middle of Season 5. Um, overall, the show continues to be good. Season 4 seems like it was a lot more on the side of the side effects of going to other galaxies, space travel, meeting aliens being the forefront command with all the stuff that's going on. So, you know, um, Major Carter's um, got possessed by, a, has been, or not possessed by, but gotten taken, had a ghoul in her, got taken over by a space robot AI. Um, all the stuff that Colonel O'Neill's gone through. Um, Teal um, still being the um, traitor, but then also going back into the service of Apophis and then being unbrainwashed and all of that. Uh, Daniel Jackson and losing Share and um, losing his professor mentor guy. So all the stress that um, they've been going through is taking their toll. So most of season four deals with all of that stuff. So overall, a pretty good season there. Um, season five now it feels like it's dealing with some of the residual effects of that. Um, tying out some loose ends so we have an episode with uh, Martin called Wormhole Extreme. So that episode is okay, it's like a par making a parody of Stargate SG-1, but the last episode with Martin um, was actually the better episode I thought, so um, things like that. So they're kind of rounding out the existing stuff so they can move forward, but now that Apophis is actually dead, we're, it seems like I think this is where they start moving more into um, the system lords and all of their interactions. Um, now that Cronus is dead as well, they can deal with um, everybody else a little bit more. And I think it's a, almost about time for the introduction of, I think, not a pop, I think a pop, not a pop, so he was the brother of Rob, but the um, ghoul that was risen and like trying to ascend but was kicked out or whatever. Maybe that was a, well, I don't think that was Apophis, so I'm drawing a blank on who that was now, but um, I think it's about time for him because we have, you know, the return of uh, Tanith and some, and um, what's her name, Daniel's ex-girlfriend got possessed by the Gould as well, so um, I think it was Osiris, so all of that I think is going to start coming up in season six, so season five kind of deals with 
um, that transition. So that's kind of where we're at now. So not that the episodes are bad, but it's just that weird transition episode from the show's beginnings and dealing with those timelines and story arcs and then moving now into the um, second third of the show um, to deal with the uh, rest of the Gould and then ultimately transition from there into the Ori. And then now to round out this particular episode, I had a chance to finish playing episode one of Wolfenstein 3D called Escape from Wolfenstein. And overall, I want to say that I'm very impressed with um, not only the game and what it was, what it's doing, but also the conversion of um, Brutal Wolfenstein to recreate the game into a more Doom-like experience. So while the first few levels are generally just flat levels like the original Wolfenstein 3D, um, a lot of the color mappings and decorations and upgrades and upscales make it look a lot better than the old than the original Wolfenstein 3D to the point where it feels like Wolfenstein or more brutal Wolfenstein 3D could have been released in the same year as Doom and just been similar games to each other but with different stories. So the first few levels of Brutal Wolfenstein 3D are generally in the vein of the um, original game just with, you know, better colors and graphics, more guns, uh, better ceiling effects so it does look like you're actually in, in different rooms even though after a while they start to look pretty much the same as extended hallways and stuff even though technically you're in one castle but you do realize you're going through dungeons and conference rooms and sleeping quarters and things like that. But by the time you get into the second half of the game, or second half of the episode, and notably into the last couple of uh, levels, you do realize the expansiveness of it because at one point you do get to go outside in one of the levels. And then um, I think in level 1-8 is where you kind of have more of a dungeon look and feel, but you do have, you know, the going up and down stairs and um you get to see like more the castle seems more expansive because the rooms are bigger you get to see outside a little bit as you're running around the building and stuff like that so brutal doom kind of expands on what or brutal wolfenstein 3d does expands a lot on what wolfenstein 3d does to make the levels seem that much more expansive so like it makes you feel like you are in an actual castle and in different levels because looking at some of the gameplay videos of uh, Wolfenstein on YouTube of the original game, it does get kind of repetitive um, as far as what the levels are doing, even though there's, you know, slightly different color palettes, different enemies, and different mazes and levels and stuff like that, but they ultimately do look kind of the same. So I'm giving props to Brutal Wolfenstein 3D for doing that. And even in the, and this actually does, um, ultimately come together in the final level of the episode. So when you're fighting the guy who's bro I guess you killed the guy's bro the, the first boss's brother, so he's there to take revenge on you. So when you're in that final room, it does look like you're in a kind of mini arena. So you do have to take care of the guards on the left and right that are up on ledges. And then when you open the door, you have to kill that guy. Um, and then when you escape, it does look like you're escaping from a castle because you do have to go through a transitional courtyard area and then leave and go outside, whereas the original game is more... Um, you're going in a hallway and you're looking at a picture of the outside, so it's kind of weird looking, so Brutal Wolfenstein um, makes that a little bit more visually better, or makes it visually better as if you're actually running outside. So overall, um, so far I'm impressed with it. I did enjoy going through all the levels and playing it and all of that so i can't wait to try the or play the second episode where i guess it deals with zombies and scientific exper um, experimentation and stuff like that so um i'll be um starting that gameplay soon so look out for that on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 but that is all for this particular episode um Next week's episode, like I mentioned, I will work on getting through Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny so I can review that. Um, I'll, and then I'll be continuing to, you know, the same things I reviewed today, I'll be continuing through for those. So the next episode of Ahsoka, continuing to watch Stargate SG-1, and 
I'll probably be starting Brutal Wolfenstein or continuing Brutal Wolfenstein 3D in the next couple of days. So subscribe to the YouTube channel to get um, updates on when those videos are posted. Um, otherwise, you can subscribe to the show, get past episodes, um, get subscription links, support the show and all of that by visiting the website at headphonesneal.reviews or supporting the show directly on Patreon at patreon.com slash n one where you can get early access to the episodes, um, ad-free versions of the show as well, and all of that other stuff. That's at uh, patreon.com slash one But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next.